Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Sunday Interview. My guest today is a real estate merchant and politician who is the gubernatorial candidate of a political party gunning for the top job of a state in southwestern part of Nigeria. I am Azizat Olalua and you'll be meeting my guest after this time out. Stay with us. Welcome back. My guest today is a success-driven personality who has achieved a remarkable feat in his private business. He is currently vying for the position of the governor in Lagos State under the platform of the Action Democratic Party. I'm talking about Mr. Babatunde Badamosi. Thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Yeah, nice meeting you. Now, I know it's a busy period for you at this time. Do you still get to relax at all? I do, actually. Um, I take time out from time to time, play table tennis uh, at the uh, house opposite mine. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes I go for long walks just to relax my mind. Sometimes I go to the beach just to stretch out, laze a bit, you know, <laughs> and, um, you know, take stock of all that's happening around me. Oh, yeah, sometimes I also play, I confess, I also play FIFA 19. Which is? On PlayStation. Oh. If you know, you know. <laughs> oh, I didn't know. Now I know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure those watching that play... Uh, yeah, well, the children are all gone now, so, you know, it's not fun playing yourself. Alone. It's not that much fun. I can yeah. imagine that. So, how was growing up like? It was very interesting. Um, I grew up on the streets of Ikorodu, mm. uh, Lagos Island, and Suruleri. You know, um, I stayed with my, uh, my uncle, Rashid Badamos. He actually brought me up. He had that responsibility because my parents uh, were still away in England at the time when I was growing up. Um, I was brought back quite early, having been born over there. Um, and uh, once I returned, I, I was with my grandfather, the late uh, Chief Esuk Badamosi, for quite a while. I think I was about three years old when Uncle Rashid married Auntie Tinu. Mm. And uh, he came home one day and said, you know what? He came to Ikorudu and he said, you know what? enough of all this, you need to go to school. And he dragged me from Ikorodu to Lagos, put me in Kekoto uh, Primary School when they were at their old location inside Suruleri. And, uh, you know, from there, that's how my schooling started. And I stayed in his household till I was an early teen. Uh, my parents were back and they wanted more of their firstborn. Mm. So I had to relocate to Ikorodu and um, you know, it was an interesting childhood. I had, I, I had and still have many parents. You know how it is in large families. I do. <laughs> you know, where all the uncles and all the aunties are basically your dad and your mom, you know, uh, by extension. Okay. So and I spent holidays with, I think, every one of them. Every one of my uncles and aunties. I spent my holidays with each one of them, one by one. You know, um, of course... I had my favorites, like my late uncle Wahid. Um, uh, early on, he was my favorite uncle. Uh, later, you know, later in life, when I became a full-grown adult, Uncle Rashid became my favorite uncle um, because we got to talk a lot, you know. And uh, a lot of the a lot of the lessons that he taught me while I was a child growing up okay. in his household have remained with me, and they will remain with, they will remain with me forever. Um, also, my auntie Wonu, the former Attorney General of Lagos State and former uh, Federal Director of Prosecutions really? at the Federal Ministry of Justice. Very, very tough woman. I, I think that perhaps uh, politics missed somebody like her. I think that um, if she had gone into politics, she would have made a very good first female president of Nigeria. Wow. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Tough, but very loving. 
Okay, so from the primary, primary school level, tell us the academic institutions you attended. Okay, I went to, uh, uh, well, um, I went to Government College Lagos, Eric Moore Road, okay. in Surulere. Um, that was a blessing because it was walking distance from the house. Mm. So I actually used to take the walk from home every day. And, and I started school, secondary school, as an, uh, as an afternoon student. Really? Yeah, which meant that I had to go to school at 2 o'clock. Why? When people, because the schools just didn't have the capacity to, to, to take all the children. Oh, okay. So um, what, we, what they had to do in those days was to have a morning and an afternoon session for virtually every school in Lagos. Um, it was Aladji Jakone that came to change that uh, shortly after I entered secondary school. So I spent my first year as an afternoon student, and then my second year I became a, a day student. Mm. What did you study in the I institution? I actually studied law, but I did not graduate from Why? Rasu. There was an invasion of the campus in 1989, in March 1989, that resulted in very serious injuries to me. Um, it was a very traumatic experience and perhaps due to my youth I just couldn't handle entering setting foot on the campus of Lasso again after going through such a traumatic experience at the hands of overzealous uh, mobile policemen. Mm -hmm. I also actually witnessed another traumatic event the physical assault um, by slapping and beating of uh, the late Vice Chancellor of Lasso, uh, Mrs. Jadesola Akonde, the late Mrs. Jadesola Akonde. It is my regret to this day that I never got to tell her, because I don't think any other student saw that. Mm. I just happened to be in their Black Mariah at the time, and she came at them remonstrating that, who called you? Who called you guys to this place? And they beat her up. You know, they actually, beat, they actually laid their hands on her and beat her up. Um, that's something that I'll never forget. And, you know, my thought was if the Vice Chancellor could be beaten, could be so badly assaulted, then, mm. you know, who's safe, really, at the end of the day? Okay. And that's one of the problems with having a military government. Mm. Mm. Okay, so from there on, then Ron, what did you do? Uh, I ran off to London after about... Uh, you ran? Well, yes, wow. I, I ran for dear life. Mm. Um, not that I was being chased or anything, but I just could not hack it anymore. I just could not live in a society where people were so openly and blatantly oppressed by the authorities, by the very people that were supposed to be protecting them. You know, I'd up, up until that point, apart from having been born in the UK and being brought back before I was even aware of myself, I'd never been uh, outside of Africa. I'd been to other West African countries, but I'd never been outside of Africa. But I was determined that I had to go, and I did. Okay, now let's talk about your marriage. Who is your wife? Who are you married to? How many kids do you have? And how did you meet her? Well, I'm married to the beautiful Mrs. Folasha Degbadamosi, mm -hmm. who uh, has given me a pair of twins. Mm. Yes, our last children are twins. And we have five children. Wow. Mm. So where are they now? They're all in school. In Nigeria, outside? Abroad. Okay. So how did you meet your wife? You haven't answered that question. Ah, well, <laughs> how did you woo her? It's not the usual fairy tale mm. story. What happened was uh, I was very good friends with her younger sister, who was my okay. neighbor. Mm. And uh, there was this thing. She, she, was, she was going to celebrate her birthday on the 2nd of October. Uh, and you know, it was on, then it was off, then it was on, then it was off. You know, and eventually one day she said, you know what, I'm going to just do the party. So on the day that she was supposed to have the party, she started calling me and saying, okay. you must make sure you come to my party or you will never enter my house again. You know? So I went. I was supposed to go to work, but I decided, you know what, I don't want Taiwo's Wahala. Let me just go. So I called work and, you know, mm -hmm. sort of uh, skived off work that day. And uh, I called in sick, basically. I won't lie about that. Um, and I went to the party. And as soon as I opened the front door, the first person I saw was my wife. Ah. Now, the funny thing is, she'd been calling me before, but we'd never met. Because she ran uh, an IT training business on, on uh, Lewisham High Street. Mm. 
okay. at the time. And it was, a, it was a very small business, but she was doing okay with it. And she was trying to get me to come for an IT course. I wasn't having any of it because I felt like I, my, my own business was just beginning to grow and I wasn't really interested in taking a professional course at that time, even though I was quite good at IT already. Um, so I passed the opportunity on to somebody else, an elderly, uh, uh, an older uncle of mine. I passed that opportunity on to him and I never met her. And when we met, I didn't realize that that's the person that had been harassing me on the phone. Okay. Yeah. Um, we got talking. I mean, from the moment I saw her, I was... It was love at first sight. I wouldn't say that. I, I was... <laughs> well, it was something. I was interested in her. <laughs> I was interested in getting to know her, but I didn't know who mm. she was. I had no clue who she was. I didn't realize she was Tao's elder sister. Mm. I was just caught by the way she looked. And apparently, she told me later that, you know, she was attracted to me as well as soon as I opened the door. So wow. perhaps, you know, there's something there. But we got talking and uh, we talked some more. And it was the following day that I realized that she was my friend's mm. uh, elder sister. You know, but we talked. Okay, yeah. And mm -hmm. then you, later on you got married. So what's your favorite meal? You know what? I have an adventurous tongue. Mm. Very, very adventurous. I, I, I'd say that if you asked my younger sister that question, she'd probably say beans and doodoo. Okay. Well, I'm asking you. And if you ask my mom, <laughs> my mom might also say the same thing. Mm. Um, my younger brother would probably say rice and dodo. Well, what would you say? That's it. I, I have you don't know. such an adventurous tongue. It's, it's OK, I'll tell you what. The one food that I keep hankering after, that I really like, OK, that when I'm hungry, it's the first thing that pops into my head, okay. is amala. Hmm. Ewedu begiri, and specifically. Abula for short. And specifically, goat meat. It has to be goat. Hmm. If it's not goat, it's not doing it for me. Wow, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Do you drink alcohol? Yes, sparingly, occasionally. Mm -hmm. What book uh, have you read recently? What book have I read recently? Um, I have read a number of books in the last few months. Akio Morita. The autobiography of Akio Morita. I've actually read that. That's the founder of Sony. Sony, okay. Yeah, hmm. that's the one that, that I've read recently. Okay, and your favorite color? Isn't that obvious? <laughs> okay, you're wearing it. Yeah. But well, you're wearing blue black, but then the color of your cap is different, so yes. I could assume it's that one. No, it's this one. It's oh. this one. This one down here. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one. Now, let's talk about your taste. It seems you have a sophisticated taste when it comes to architecture, because uh, that's your profession, right? You're, you're, I'm not an architect. You're not, well, you, you're, you're into real estate. I'm a real estate developer. Developer. So uh, let's talk about your taste, because yeah. I can see your interior, the, the detail you put into it. What inspired you to, first off, go into that profession? Confession time. Lesson time. You talked about the interior. Yeah, first off. All right. And I used style to enter the real estate stuff. <laughs> I didn't do this interior. My wife did. Oh, I see. She's somebody I consider to be the consummate interior decorator. So this is my wife's job. Oh, I build the houses, I design the houses, and I build them. But I don't do the interiors. I, I leave her to do the final finishing. Okay. Um, what inspired me to do it? Hmm? I've always wanted a better quality of life. And I, I want to believe that my grandfather was a big influence in that. You know, um, he always lived large. Mm. And even while he lived large, he also still always had this earthy side to him, where he related with the lowest of the low in society. Just as comfortably as he related with, you know, kings and noblemen. Mm. So I'd say that my taste was largely inspired by my grandfather. Do you listen to music? Oh, yes. Who's your favorite musician? Uh, maybe any favorite song? Right now, the one uh, 
There are two, no, actually make that three. All right, make that five. <laughs> <laughs> make that five musicians that I am actually enjoying right now, that I'm really feeling. Okay, wow. Um, number one will be Adekunle Gold. Mm. Yeah. Uh, number two would be a musician that not many people know as yet. His name is Martin Fields. Okay. Um, number three would be Femi Kuti. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've recently been looking up his catalog and I've been listening to his old standards. And my, that, that guy is a man of genius. And then his younger brother. He is really. Okay, Shion Kuti as well. Shion Kuti as well okay. has been grabbing my attention. Um, I'm guessing you can tell from all of this that I'm into acoustic music. Absolutely. A great deal. Yeah, but if I asked you to sing a song, really, at this time, which song would you sing? Right now? Yes. Awe ni bululo ka tafi wa oka ibio balo jamo. So, Asha, that's Asha a is also one of my favorites. Oh, nice. <laughs> um, also, I like uh, Simi, hmm. and I also like these two sisters, Niniola oh, and, Tenny. and Tenny. Interesting. Each of them for different reasons. You know, their creativity just knocks me dead. Hmm. Yet from the you same know. family. From the same family, they've chosen different genres of music to express themselves. Hmm. Uh, Tenny being the more earthy, the more uh, old schoolish whilst being still somehow frightfully modern <laughs> and Nini being the house diva, you know. Um, yeah, I, I love music. I love music. I definitely gold because of the way he just makes you ask questions. Hmm. He makes you ask questions. He makes you question our standards, who we are, what our society is all about. And then, of course, I like those two kids that have been, you know, breaking tables across the world. Mm. Um, <clears throat> I don't want to mention them. I want you to mention that so I don't uh, get okay. at this. Okay. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. I like his music. Uh, I like Davido because somehow they've managed to find the right mix. You already mentioned more, more than five musicians. <laughs> I so told you, you I love music. I love music. Well, you haven't sang really. You only uh, I already gave you one number. That's enough. Ah, you practically mentioned the. And then, of course, of the, the Baba of everybody, <laughs> Fela and Nicola Bukuti. May he continue to rise. With to whom peace. I share a birthday. Mm. Nice. So you forever may remember him. Oh yeah, definitely. Okay, so I still have some more questions for you. Uh, but we'll have to go on a short break at this point. I've been speaking with the governorship candidate of the Action Democratic Party in Lagos, Mr. Bapatunde Badamosi. Stay with us. We will be right back. Welcome back. I have been speaking with the real estate merchant and politician, Babatunde Badamosi, the governorship candidate of the Action Democratic Party in Lagos State. Thank you for staying with us on the show. Thank you very much. Now, you've been quite successful in your business, so I'm interested in knowing why you decided to venture into politics. I think it was inevitable. Um, a lot of my friends who know me really well have wondered why it took me so long to get involved in politics because um, I was always uh, interested in what government was doing. I was always interested in government policy, especially as it affected the people on the streets, the ordinary man. Um, I'm guessing that might be to do with the fact that I lived with my uncle when he was appointed at 28, the Commissioner for Economic Development and Establishment. And I uh, got the privilege of seeing him you know, uh, up close, working on budget reviews mm. and all this kind of thing. Uh, I would sit there in his study, sometimes on his lap, and he would be writing stuff, and I will just be reading all of it. So he got me interested in, in government policy early. Um, in my later years, my grandfather, no, first of all, my auntie, his wife, uh, when the Second Republic was about to start, she got me thinking more about what politicians were saying and what they were promising and how they were going to deliver. 
I remember I was having discussions about free education uh, just before I started secondary school. And uh, I started secondary school, and then my second year, education became free. Mm. You know, so um, that was there. And then finally, I think my grandfather's influence was the, the icing on the cake, so to speak. Because in my teenage years, I got to spend even more time with my grandfather than I'd done uh, much earlier. Okay. And I tell you what, that took, that took, because I got to hear the stories of the pre-independence Nigeria firsthand from one of the great players of the time, you know. Um, I got to hear all the stories of how they built up the Western region. They had a mission. They had a mission, and you know, that mission was truncated by the coups, the twin coups of 1966 because it was from that point on that we began to stagnate. So, um, yeah, th th those were my influences in, 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 in politics. All That's right. the reason why I ended up, um, you know, entering politics. Now, many will be quick to say that you don't even have experience that. Why not I House of Assembly first before vying for the top job in the state? I've had worse. I've had people tell me to go and run for councillor. And my response to all of them has always been the same. They're the ones without experience. And the experience that they're talking about is different from the experience that's actually required. The experience they're talking about is experience of the shenanigans of government, experience of over-invoicing, experience of stealing public funds, experience of bending over and getting, you know, royally shafted, so to speak. Forgive my French. Mm. That's the kind of experience they're talking about. And I'm not interested in that kind of experience. The kind of experience that Lagosians actually need now is experience of providing the needs of Lagosians. So if you're talking about inexperience of corruption, yes. Inexperience of... Inexperience of service. Inexperience. Well, if it's service, I have loads of that. I have loads and loads of that. I mean, here within the Amen Estate, I provide, I serve the residents. It's a private business. Yes, it is. But the, the residents are paying me to do that, just as the taxpayers of Lagos are paying the governors to do to serve them. Likewise, I get paid to serve the people of Lagos, uh, to serve the residents of Amen Estate. And I've been doing that faithfully. I don't think that there's any resident of Amen Estate that will, that will say to you, Mr. Agbadamosi has not served our interests. Nobody will tell you that. Nobody will tell you that they've not had 24 hours electricity for the last eight years. Nobody in Amen Estate will tell you that they've not had access to clean potable water for the last eight years, uninterrupted. Nobody in Amen Estate will tell you that their roads are not good, that they have potholes in their roads, or that their houses are flooded out. Nobody in Amen Estate will tell you that. They pay me a minimal amount, about 520,000 per annum, to provide all of these things, as well as take out their bins and make sure that their sewage is collected outwards and treated. Okay? Nobody has soakaways in their compounds. Nobody has overhead tanks in their houses. Nobody. Not in the ministries. So, would you call that service? Okay, well, if you win and you get to the office, what would you achieve in your first 100 days? Well, 100 days is never really enough in the life of any administration. In three months, I would hope that the first vessels would have arrived. That is the is high off. capacity... Uh, high-speed catamaran ferries that I hope to be able to order within the first month of arriving in office okay. that would be able to help us ease the transportation system around Lagos State. So from Badagri to Maotu to Apapa to CMS, from Ikorodu to Ikoi to Langbasa to Baduri to Victoria Island, Tarzan Jetty and so on. Uh, from Elasha Beach and so on like that, you know, we would have, and then from Ekbe also, you know, we would have these high capacity ferries. Having done a survey of the riverbed in all of these areas, we would be able to determine what sort of draft we would require for the ferries that we need. But off the bat, I would say that we would need at the very minimum catamarans. We might go to tree marans as well if we realize that uh, the draft we need is really shallow. So we would need to keep uh, vessels that are 
that require very low drafts okay. you know, to, to float. Um, once we, I, I hope that within the first three months we would have been able to bring these in. Those we can certainly achieve. Then the other thing that I would, uh, would want us to achieve really quickly is the repair, the resurfacing of as many of the roads in Lagos as we can. We'll be working the Lagos State Public Works Corporation uh, on a 24-hour basis. That would need a lot of retooling. Again, that now becomes an issue of ordering and bringing in equipment. So uh, the usual turnaround time is about three months. Uh, if we're ordering out of inventory, uh, that is, you know, the companies that we're ordering from, if they don't actually have the equipment on hand and they have to manufacture, we could be looking at an initial six to eight weeks before the manufacturing is done, and then another month or so for the uh, shipping, uh, a month to 41 days, depending on where we're shipping from. Okay, so um, the thing is, the transport, I hope to be able to have achieved as much of that as we can um, within the first three months. So uh, I, I suspect that by day 90, by day 90, um, some of the vessels would have arrived and would have been put to use. Okay. We would have begun to put them to use. So, yeah, maybe we'll, we'll be able to say by uh, 100 days that we've, re we've reduced demonstrably the travel time of commuters in Lagos. But what happens if you didn't get to win? We will win. You're that sure that you I'm win. certain that Lagosians want a different life. I'm certain that Lagosians don't want talk anymore. Okay. I'm certain that Lagosians want somebody who will do what they say they will do. And I've demonstrated over time, over and over again, that I am a doer. I'm not just a talker. I'm not just someone who talks about doing something. I'm somebody who's actually done it. Okay. So I know exactly what to do, how to do it, and when to do it. Okay. And the answer to when is now. OK, so tell us about your happiest moment in life. Happiest moments uh, when I met my wife. When I had my children, each and every one of them, um, happiest moments, there are many. Okay. There are many, many happiest, happy moments for me. Finally, what has life taught you and how have you been able to use that lesson? Well, you know, one, what, one thing that life has taught me is to be humble. Humility, however, does not translate to stupidity. All right, thank you very much uh, for featuring on our show today. Thank you. It's, it's been, been a quite pleasure. Good time with you. All right, with that, we wrap it up on the Sunday interview for this week. My guest was Mr. Babatunde Badamosi, the gubernatorial candidate of the ADP in Lagos. Now, for all your questions and inquiries, send all of them to the Sunday interview at tvcnews.tv. Until I come here with next week, I am Azizat Olalua. Bye for now.